Hi, everybody. This is Joel Simmons, and this is another Two Minutes Turf Talk. And this week, I want to introduce our 200th episode of the Earthworks podcast. And we're very excited that we've got 200 episodes behind us. We really never believed it would last this long and be this successful, but it has been a journey like no other, and we've really enjoyed it. We've interviewed some of the best people in the turf industry. We've brought some wonderful stories to you, uh, and we've had a lot of fun with it. Again, the the podcast started back during COVID when we were wondering how we we're going to stay in business and how we're going to communicate with everybody that we wanted to be able to talk to. So Jack Higgins, our agronomist and uh, host at the podcast, came up with a brilliant idea of saying, hey, let's let's do a podcast. I, of course, said, great idea. What's a podcast? And so we started the podcast, quite humbling, uh, but it really has picked up. And we now have over a thousand people that listen to the podcast uh, every week. And we've had thousands of people that have gone back through the archives to watch and listen to podcasts that we have recorded in the past. This week for the 200th, we've brought back some friends. I had a chance to interview my dear friend, Glenn Smickley, who is the uh, general manager of the Cow Club and the former superintendent at the Robert Trent Jones Golf Club in Manassas, Virginia, where I caught up with him in the early 90s. And we talk a little bit about that experience. Kevin Hicks has a chance to interview a wonderful uh, podcaster, Dave Wilbur, who has been with us a number of times and is one of the largest or most listened to podcasts that we have. And then finally, Jack Higgins uh, had a chance to interview Jay LaMonaco, one of our favorite lawn care operators. And here's a few clips of those three interviews. And please, I encourage you to watch our 200th episode of the Earthworks podcast. Thank you so much couldn't do before because it was about physics. It's about changing the soil physically. And that's what base saturation does. And, and you saw that at RTJ. Well, to that point, I didn't even think about mentioning it, but that was another thing that was very, very evident was when we would air file. I mean, my first couple right. of years, my first year there in 1990, we were literally breaking times. We almost couldn't pull a core right. because I our Virginia that. red clay was so tight. Yeah. And as we started doing the high cal line and getting that calcium to move, and again, so all started to flocculate. I mean, but you know, all of a sudden, and when we could pull a core, it was like bullets. I mean, you try to drag it, yeah. and it would not. It was a, it's like it would like turn into a rock, and you and it was nothing, an Adobe you know, brick. break it up. So I noticed even as fast as by late ninety two, early ninety three, you would pull a core and. All of a sudden, you could break it up in your hand and, you know, you could take a drag mat over it and the soil would break up. And it was just it was just softer. And anyway, it was it was so evident what it did to the soil. In, I mean, it was in six months of construction, you could do five years worth of work. So talk about that. What what? Yeah. What well, have you seen and what why is it so important? I, re I love that you guys are using that quote because it's. You know, it's something I've said for a while, and I think I said it just kind of casually on the, you know, on the podcast that we talked about that on, and, and everybody grabbed it. And you know, all so. of us, our eyes went like this and said, <laughs> that's the buzzword. Absolutely. And the, and, the, and the explanation of that really is just that anytime we have any exposed ground, yeah, you know, any, any, it doesn't matter if we're talking about construction or renovation, you know, small, large, whatever, you know, anytime we expose some soil. And they're doing some kind of tillage or some sort of working that soil in some way or another. We we have a huge opportunity to really screw up and a huge opportunity to really do some good. Yeah, you know, yeah. there is a Paul's best look to, yeah. to a lawn sure. was built upon. Like we had a lot of different programs prior to this one program. Like it just like you know we only have one program for everybody, and so that's it's a really, big. That's a business philosophy, I would say. Correct. Uh, okay, so so explain that a little bit, and and you, it's something that changed over time over the fifteen years of you doing this. Yeah. So like we did when I first started doing this, we were doing a la carte apps, and we had like three or four different programs, and it was all based on budget. And so you know, but the problem we were finding out, we we're going on doing like follow-up calls for people and extra apps because they weren't satisfied with the way that it was looking. And and so we had far more people in a budget program, okay, but we had far more complaints and callbacks because we weren't, like mainly because of weeds and disease. So 
like I got to a point where I was kind of frustrated. And I, you know, I told Scott, I was like, dude, people are paying us for a professional opinion. And so I, I mean, we're growing grass. Like, so you have to like look at what the grass needs to thrive. 